episode of the Team Venom comic show. I'm your host Rory Bailey, joined by a co-host in Connor Franks because, you know, we're both I talking about up. shit. Exactly. Um, you'll have seen from the intro that there's three of us scheduled. However, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it is just the pair of us that are doing the bulk of the work on this one. And our colleague has sent us a nice little clip. So that'll, that'll appear at some point. But um, firstly, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you, Connor. I think this is the first time we've been on a camera chatting about this since the last one probably uh i think yeah it's first time i've been an episode we've spoke to each other basically all day every, every day, day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all day every like day. four hours yesterday <laughs> yeah playing fortnite and just you know being friends yes um <laughs> but yeah i think it's first time we've been an actual video call so you're not supposed to actually say about us being friends in it because remember that causes other members to leave usually <laughs> so, i mean aside from ourselves man i came back and i've already whittled it down to like two that's true. There was six of us, and then you <laughs> making seven, <laughs> and now it's us. <laughs> Just want to make the wall burn, Mister Green. Mister Green. So, so um, comics. Yes. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is comic book news, and we're going to get dive straight in with this because I've got three three bits, and. For the purpose of the audience, this isn't just comics as such. It's comic book related things. So we could talk about comic book related video games, movies, TV shows, that sort of stuff. General collectibles. nerd culture, basically. Yeah, that gen- generally falls under that umbrella because of... You the know, nerd culture show. Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe Team Venom nerd culture. Yeah, yeah. We might have to rebrand it for the second episode. <laughs> I've already done the intro to this one, so it's staying. <laughs> I mean, we could keep calling it that. It's just I feel like we've said nerd, cu- nerd culture in like the when we're talking it for the actual intro bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, we talk that. general nerd culture, and then it just wraps it up. That does wrap, wrap it up. Yeah. See? yeah. Good night. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, first part of news I wanted to chat about was the heavy rumours about Andrew Garfield being in Venom 3, which um, I know we, we, we've got a segment coming up on here called Head to Head, where we talk about where, where we think the Spider-Man franchise should go. And we're pretty sure we predict that in that. If not, we did it on the deep dive Spider-Man video review thing that we did for talk, for the Talking Trash show. We did too much. Did. <laughs> and yet others, others take over two weeks to do a 20-minute video and use that as an excuse to not join us. Anyway, and I was in that video <laughs> <You were. laughs> with the wrong name. <laughs> you were indeed, Andrew. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the Andrew Garfield in Venom Free thing, I'm sure because I've not rewatched back that head to head thing we did, I think this is probably the best time for us to cut to that new segment, head to head, and then we'll come back and talk about the news. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Head to Head, our first one as part of the first episode of the Team Venom Comics show. Um, it's me, Rory, I'm joined with Connor. So uh, I would say how's it going, but you know, this is like going to be the fourth time that we've probably asked it on this episode because of the nature of pre-recording stuff and spi- splicing them all in together. So uh, initially the plan for this segment was that we were going to find a, a topic that we could disagree with and argue about. And annoyingly, we couldn't find one. <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. So the stuff we were getting a trip drive, we were like, oh, yeah, where's Batman? And we were both were like, yeah, it's either Clooney or Kill Me. Yeah, fair enough. Gone. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, you were saying that you, you said I could try and argue that the Dark Knight trilogy was good. And like, I don't like it. <laughs> so it's so like, like <laughs> so it's just one of those things where we just very quickly ran out of subjects that we were opposed on because all the other things like Spider Man and X Men and things like that, we know that we're pretty much aligned with that stuff. So yeah. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to change what we originally planned the segment to. It's just going to be the pair of us chatting about something without Cali. So yeah, high five. <laughs> I mean, at um, least this gives us till next year to actually think of something we argue about. That is true. So, um, <laughs> Dave's merits. <laughs> to be fair, 
It's not really, is it? No. <laughs> we could do who was the worst contributor. That could be the next one. <laughs> Again, I don't think that'd be an argument. No, that's also true. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so the, the answer to that is Stephen. Yeah, yeah. See, this is the problem we have. <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. So, um, and it has to be head to head with me and you because if it was head to head with like me and Collie, that just turned into a hate crime. Yeah, same here. So, uh, realistically, we we're just going to do Spider Man. Spider Man. We're going to talk about <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> now, you can see a full deep dive video on our channel where we we chat about how great that film was in depth. Um, but for the benefit of this, we're just going to talk about where we sort of want to see the franchise go and who we want to see reprise their respective roles. Obviously, spoiler alert, because there's going to be loads of spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. And if you haven't seen it yet and you're a Marvel fan, then you're a fucking arsehole. <laughs> Why would you wait this long? <laughs> I agree. You deserve it. <laughs> it's like when I was on the bus earlier, I was like talking about things. Like, oh, I'm and try not to say stuff because spoilers are like, wait a minute, it's been out two weeks. No, fuck them. <laughs> yeah, you just like, no, fuck these people. You're not seen Spider Man yet. That's your issue. So now let's talk about Toby. <laughs> also, can we please welcome back Venom Kitty? Ah, there she is. Mine's over there somewhere attacking stuff in the background like it was in the Christmas special. To Normally be fair. known as Impact Kitty, but since we burned those bridges, it's just it's just Venom Kitty. And um, for those at home, that's all clean laundry, but will no longer be because of Venom Kitty. Bless her. <laughs> Venom Kitty. <laughs> My cat's a knobhead. Back to you. Thanks. Aren't all cats knobheads? Yeah. See? Can't even disagree on that. We can't even disagree <laughs> on that. No, all, all cats are actually knobs. <laughs> so, um... That's gonna, so, yeah. that's gonna that'll be the one thing we've ever said that will cause a massive argument in the comments. <laughs> Apart from when we did that video with it, uh, we had to turn the comments off. I think it's Dave and his fat wife. <laughs> He's so fat. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> you, can't come in, you can't come in the comments and then, like, us not just say shit in videos. <laughs> you started this. Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah. Spider Man. Remember, <laughs> remember when we said we we're going to take a really professional approach with the Team Venom comic show that we planned? We've got all these segments. The first time we said that, we're like, nope. <laughs> Professionalism's okay. gone. Right. The layout, <laughs> the fact we've got segments and it's like yeah, an actual that's professional. Show, that's professional. <laughs> what happens in those segments does not have to be. <laughs> this is true. So, uh, Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, okay. Well, I think, yeah, I think we should go with who we want to reprise the role of Spider Man. Tom Holland is signed on for three more films. I think it was it announced or was that rumored? It was. Um, I know he's, he was supposed to have like another two MCU movies that aren't Spider Man films. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's going to stay Spider Man for a bit then, so we don't have to mention him. Yeah. Um, I think it's only fair that the person who needs to come back as Spider-Man is, of course, from the, I believe it was 2000, the film came out, Jack Black Spider-Man. Jack Black Spider-Man was amazing, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> I want a real-life Spider-Verse movie with Jack Black Spider-Man. Yeah. I, I, want, I want Multiverse of Madness to show all the various Jack Black things that he's done, so he's running around as the Hulk and Thor and everything like he did before. <laughs> so, uh yeah. That would be pretty amazing. We just get like, like a multiverse of madness. There's a bit where you hear Thor's, um, well, Led Zeppelin's immigrant song starting up, and fucking Jack Black just comes running through all excitedly with that swinging a hammer around. <laughs> just want multiverse Jack Black in anything. <laughs> multiverse of madness, except he calls for the Avengers at one point during the film, and all and the Avengers all turn up, and they're all Jack Black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, including, like, amazing. Black, Black Widow, Widow and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is why we can't do head-to-head. -head. It doesn't work, does it? To be fair. I, know. I think, and I know you're going to agree with this, but I think the, the Spider-Man has got to come back for another film is Andrew Garfield. Yeah, definitely. Tobey Maguire's trilogy, he got his trilogy and he got the ending. It was satisfying. I know he came in Norway Home and that was obviously amazing. Um, But he came to the trilogy, he got his trilogy, I should say, and it was a very satisfying send-off. Um, Amazing yeah. Spider-Man 2 didn't really get it and then have you seen the deleted scene for Amazing Spider-Man 2? The one with his dad? Yes. Yes, yeah. Right, yeah. I feel so like, that'd be cool if that just appeared and they expanded on that. Exactly. I feel like that could lead to a whole lot of mess um, 
especially if, if it had it where, you know, his dad was only back because he's like now working for Oscorp or something like that. So I was thinking when I saw that scene, the deleted scene, that would have been great foreshadowing if the next villain was Chameleon. Yes. Because they I had know. that whole thing in the 90s, didn't they, where Chameleon had the, the robot clones of uh, of Peter's parents and stuff. Um, and they brought them back for the, just so that Chameleon could kill them. <laughs> yeah. It's so. one of them, though. It's like Marvel don't really seem to, as much as I love the MCU and everything like that, they don't really seem to pull the little more obscure-ish villains away. Like, you could, I suppose... Well, no, because you can't really argue, like, Sandman isn't that big of a Spider-Man villain, but because he was in Spider-Man 3, along with Venom, who is a massive Spider-Man villain, and yeah. um, Harry Osborn, Green Goblin, which is obviously yeah. just, like, avenging for his dad, it it worked to bring him back, and obviously in this one, he brought him back because of Toby. I don't know, it's, it's like... I know they've done, like, little villains appearing, like Shocker, for example. Yeah. Um... But they've not been like your mainstay villains. Like as much as I would love Chameleon to be to come in and be the villain. Yeah. They don't really go for those kind of No, I know what you mean. They 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 want the over the top flashy sort of characters in yeah, I know. The I know ones exactly. that are gonna pull people the one where your your casual fans can see the trailer of it and be like, Oh, that's Yeah. You know. Or oh, the electro thing where it's just like right. Trailer shots, fucking shitloads of electricity just flying everywhere. Fucking yeah. shit up. Go for it. And then uh, also there was the trailer shot of the big mechanical rhino that everyone was like, oh my God, rhino looks amazing. Thank you, Sony. Thank you for what you did with rhino. <laughs> with the, the two seconds of screen time that it got at the very end of the scene, at the oh, end, yeah. very end of the film, and then just cut out. <laughs> I was so angry at that. I love rhino. And it, it, it didn't. I love, the, I love the proper Rhino, yeah. Yeah, same. Which that wasn't. But this is how I felt with X Men Last Stand and Juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, Vinnie Jones is hilarious, and his lines of "Let us out, I need a pee." Great. Mm. Don't you know who I am? I'm the Juggernaut bitch. Great. However, Vinnie Jones as Juggernaut, or at least their iteration of Juggernaut, is shocking. Yeah. I feel like and... we shouldn't have had to wait for Deadpool two to get how Good Juggernaut. Decent one. Sh- yeah, how he looked, and but although you know, I'm not gonna lie, he had like two fights in the film and lost one of them. Um, yeah, I know. But at least he looked like Juggernaut. Yeah. The annoying thing with the uh, with the Vinnie Jones Juggernaut as well is because that was what 2005 that that movie came out, or 2004, something like that. Four, five, six, one. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I know they they the last stand takes heavily from the. Um, Astonishing X Men run by Josh Whedon because they do they they have Cavita Rao in there and the Mutant Cure which is introduced in that run and before that run was the Uncanny X Men graphic novel run that we chat about quite a lot on various things where I say yeah this is fucking great where Juggernaut joins the team and they do that whole redemption arc for him and all that sort of stuff so when that film came out Juggernaut had been on the X Men for like two or three years. And they just went, <laughs> if you're yeah. a, a comic book reader, you're going to hate this. <laughs> yeah. So also, it, it was... came out in 2006, just for the fact checkers. Ah, okay. So then it would have been about three or four years that he would have been like with the X-Men in some form of association on yeah. a regular basis as well. <laughs> anyway, Spider-Man. <laughs> Thwip. <laughs> <laughs> so the Andrew Garfield thing, we, I mean, one of the things that I'd like to see is... Um, Obviously, Sony's been doing all the world building for their stuff that isn't in the MCU, what with Venom and the upcoming Morbius. And obviously, Morbius knows who Venom is because he, the trailer shows him cracking that joke of when someone says, oh, who are you? He's like, oh, I am Venom. Venom. No, I'm kidding, yeah. Dr. Morbius. Exactly, yeah. So there's that. And then it just confuses people because obviously Michael Keaton's Vulture's in there. But I'm thinking multiverse and the fact that some of the multiversal variants are the same actor like J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. So that's probably not the MCU Vulture. And See, this is probably somewhat we're going to deep dive into on like the full yeah. uh, Spider-Man <clears throat> thing. But this just shows that they could probably get Tom Hardy as Venom in Tom Holland. Yes, without It'll be a different Venom. It'll be a, a exactly. different Eddie Brock, yeah. Yeah. Because they say J. Jonah Jameson's in there and still hits Spider-Man, he's just got less hair. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Whereas he could, if they went to do, to do a Sam Raimi yeah, revisitation or, or whatever of the original trilogy, he, J. I'm sure J.K. Simmons would happily put that flat top back on. Yeah. So, 
but uh, not that I'm pulling for that. Although one of the things I saw rumoured was that they were going to do a, an animated version of Spider-Man Four, which was the uh, the Tobey Maguire film that that they ended up cancelling. Apparently, they're bringing that back as an animation, which I don't like that idea. I don't like that idea because it's. Mm. I'd much rather just see them make the film. Yeah. Because I mean. We so that's, can't be, that's can't be the success of Spider Verse. Surely that's made them be like, oh, well, we could just do this animated, and we don't have to pay yeah, yeah. as much for people. And... Yeah, because it's only the voices instead of actually being there, yeah. and they can get sound alikes for other characters where they think that the actors wouldn't come back. Yeah, Kirsten Dunst, and um, <laughs> no ones. one wants you back. <laughs> 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 Hollywood blacklist, <laughs> but um. Yeah, so it, it'd be interesting to see what they do um, going forward with all these other projects. I would love to see Andrew Garfield be the Spider-Man that, that ties Venom and Morbius in that Sony assemblage of Marvel movies together because I think that'd be pretty awesome because it feasibly could happen. The Morbius trailer's got Spider-Man on the wall with the words mo- murderer sprayed across it. And it That's looks like... He's not pulling his punches. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Because even though it's Toby Maguire's on there, we know because of the Venom connection, it can't be that unless it doesn't tie into the Venom film and it ties into the Raimi films, and it's because he watched Toe for Grace. I would love, you know, when <laughs> spoiler alert, but in the end credit thing of uh, no, <laughs> we did a spoiler alert before the segment began. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, the <laughs> if they're already thing, watching, then then where the, they bit know. Of, the bit of Venom grew, goo was left on the table and started crawling away. If it happens where this bit of Venom goop finds MCU Tom Hardy, I would love it if he's sat at a bar or something and the goo crawls past Tulfa Grace first <laughs> and like yes. just like pops up, looks at him, and then just does a little goo shake and then just crawls <laughs> over to Tom Hardy. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. It just like I mean, to be Tulfa fair, Grace, it's like no one wants this again. Well, it's like Marvel paid like, um. Natalie Portman to reprise a role as Jane Foster just to take a sleep in uh, Avengers Endgame. So I'm pretty sure they'd pay Toe for Grace to sit at the bar and not say anything. I don't think they'd have to pay Toe for Grace to sit in the bar. <laughs> That's probably where they'll find him. Yeah. To be fair, although, uh, one thing that did you ever watch that 70s show? Obviously. Yeah. I take it you enjoyed it because I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's good. They're doing a, that 90s show, right? Mm. Which is Red and Kitty with Foreman's kids. You know, like, that that could actually that could be work. good. It could, it could work because it's still got red, it's still got the, the same actors for Red and Key. So you're like, hmm, quite like the idea of that. There's no mention of Toe for Grace on there. <laughs> Maybe oh, they take the kids to see. Uh, they get to like that naughty show and they go and take the kids to see Spider Man Three. Is like, why does that man look like a worse version of Daddy? <laughs> 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 That's what I want to see. That naughty show. <laughs> and, and then they the just look at them and like, well, kids, believe it or not, this is the best version of Daddy, and that's why you can't see him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tough girl. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you had that fear. So the segment went to shit, see. basically, guys. It did. It was great. The segment went to shit. This is not a head-to-head. We'll do one. We'll think of something next time. Tune in. Yeah. We'll be in our I'll call Slip it in the comments. Do it in the yeah. comments. Tell us what you want us to argue on, and uh, even if like it's the same, even if we have the same view, the person in the comments could say, "Oh, I think that Juggernaut was really good in X Men: The Last Stand," and then we could have a five-minute segment of us just telling you you're wrong. So, <laughs> or, or if you put in the comments, because <laughs> this could be where we have to be creative here. Have someone yeah. in the comments be like, "Okay, so Rory has to argue." That <laughs> Storm yeah, is great. Connor has to argue that she's not, and even if we agree, we have to stick by what we've been told to argue. That'd be actually really good. We should definitely do that. So, uh, commenters, do that shit, and uh, we'll wrap this segment up. Spider Man. <laughs> yes, I hope you enjoyed us not really talking about Spider Man, even though that was the aim here. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode of the Team Venom Comic Show to chat about whatever you tell us in the comments. Cheers. Great. Just for the benefit of the audience, since that we're now back in here, in here after that wonderful segment, I'm sure we still great. haven't watched it back ourselves, so no we idea whether we talk we, about it or no. not, but we we're figure not gonna, it leads into this new yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're not going to pretend to uh, put that much pride in our work. 
<laughs> we, I mean, the thing is, we wanted to record this over like the last two weeks, and we actually recorded that head head segment like over a week ago, yeah. and we were waiting for our colleague to join us, and that said colleague has been telling us repeatedly, oh yeah, no, I can definitely do the first, I can definitely do the first, I can definitely do the first. But, yeah, we'll hold off from recording, and then we've got to this point, and it's like. I've forgotten what we've done before, and our colleague has not joined us. New year, new team. Who this? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so Andrew Garfield in Venom Free as the news as the news point. Um, I like the idea. I'm sure you like the idea. I'm sure we can move on from this news point. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like the only way he'll be in it will be to confirm Amazing Spider-Man three, the same way Venom was in No Way Home. Yes. Like yeah. that, it's not going to be a major point, or it's going to be like it could be a uh, case of Venom finding him, like how we said at the end of the. Oh, I'm going to go to New York and find this Spider-Man guy, or whatever. It could be one of those sorts of things. Yeah, it could, but I think I don't think it's going to be um, deep into the story because otherwise, I think that pretty much just will cancel out Amazing Spider-Man three if you have him and Venom going. Out yeah, to be Venom. Fair. unless they do it both ways, and it's like Amazing Spider-Man three. And Venom, and they call it something completely different. Yeah. Like the separation anxiety comic book arc or something, and Eddie loses the symbiote to Life Foundation and needs help. Maybe goes to goes and finds Spider-Man because he's thinking, ah, oh, hopefully there'll be a Spider-Man in this universe, let's see. Or, do you know what I mean? Because he yeah. he, he'd he still have the knowledge that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Maybe. So, could be that. So... Yeah, anyway, the next bit of comic book news is uh, Power Rangers versus Godzilla comic, which has been announced as a six-part series and uh, features Godzilla and the Dragons all battling it out on the cover, and I think no that's exactly cares. why they made it. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> you, no you one cares. just say that to upset the rest of the contributors when they turn up. <laughs> Fuck them. No one cares. It's 2021. No one cares about the Power Rangers. The biggest thing to happen to the Power Rangers in news in the past three years was the fucking Green Ranger went into an MMA fight and got killed. No, no, he's undefeated in MMA. I'm pretty sure he lost. No, he's, he's undefeated. I'm pretty sure he lost. No, no. Jason I'm David, I've, I've, I know this for a fact, Jason David Frank has, Frank has genuinely got an undefeated streak. There was another one. There was the Blue Ranger went in and got his ass kicked from the third season. I'm so ready to call your bullshit. <laughs> Jason David Frank's uh, MMA record is, like, clean. Well, there was a Power Ranger that fought and lost. Yeah, no, that was the Blue Ranger from Turbo. Blake Foster, I think his name was. And also, Mike Olasky was... He played a child ranger in the uh, first season, like, when they turned one of the one of the rangers into children, because why not? And uh, he went into MMA as well. And I think him and Blake Foster actually faced the children. Blake yeah, kicked his ass. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. The Red that Ranger. Was fairly recent. Yeah, the Red the Red Ranger got twatted. Yeah, Michael Lasky. He <laughs> wasn't an Shit, actual proper. He was an actual proper Red Ranger, and he rejected joining us on, a, on an episode of the podcast. So I'm fine with us calling him a shit gun. Fuck but you. Then. <laughs> he literally. I'll tell you, like I'd, I'd be there for the interview. I don't. Yeah, because it was the other, only the other month, so like it's like that's probably why it's in your mind because it was literally news the other month. Alleged Red Ranger. Because he never actually suited up and he was a child in the episodes. So it's like, mm, were you really a Red Ranger though? No. <laughs> so, it sounds more like a make wish, but we'll move on. Yeah. So so he got twatted. <laughs> by the Blue Ranger from Turbo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so anyway, I couldn't give a shit about that comic book series. I think it's literally just some artist that went, you know what would be called cool? Dragons All versus Godzilla. And then someone just went, yeah. I could see that being cool. Let's pay for it. And that's it. <laughs> I think that's all it is. <laughs> Just like a... Because the Mighty Morphin franchise has been doing stuff with Boom Studios and the Boom Studio stuff's been really good and it's established its own continuity that runs alongside the series and all that sort of stuff. And they've gone past the point that this would take place in. So it's like... It's, it's blatantly just some comic artist or creator's fan fiction that they've gone, let's talk to IDW and hope for the best. And... They shot big and they got it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. For those um, at home, if you if you're hearing a click in, I'm currently um, editing a video and the um, I'm just I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm majorly 
disinterested <laughs> in that one piece of news. <laughs> I mean, massively, but also I'm massively clickbaiting the shit out of my video. So comments going to geekery, guys. You check that out. <laughs> It's and literally if you're, it's called if you're, Free Spider Man came up on Fortnite because of no <laughs> so we were all wearing Spider Man skins. It is what it is. Different ones as well. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna plug that video as well right now on account of the fact that it was a video game featuring free Spider Man. And yeah. that happened to be myself, yourself, and my child. And uh who I reckon would have also kicked the shit out of Michael last week. <laughs> 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 yeah. If we've been put in a cage with him. <laughs> And oh dear! Despite hey, Mike, that, if you want, if you still want to join us for a podcast, hit me up. <laughs> and hey, Mike, despite <laughs> despite that loss you took in the cage, the biggest hit will always be your career. Haha! That's from Free Ninjas. <laughs> that's it's, it's always Hulk Hogan. That's a bit exactly. Weird. That's where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk, not just any Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan with a hairpiece. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate form of Hulk Hogan. And a different moustache. <laughs> like, that isn't Hulk Hogan. Why did they, why did they make this cartoon man version of it? <laughs> so they didn't even get prime Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> oh, this went to shit Comics. fast. Yes. So the last piece of comic book news, because we're only, we're only covering three, because yeah. you know, we've got lots of stuff in this uh, show. Last piece was uh, Zack Snyder released an image of his Green Lantern pre-VFX for the Justice League Snyder, Snyder Cut thing that he did, where, now, what pisses me off about that is he had a four and a half hour Justice League thing come out earlier, early in 2021, and the whole point of it was that fans have been saying, no, we need to really get the Snyder Cut released because Joss Whedon one was shit. And everything, and Zack Snyder saying, "Yeah, I know I've got a full version that includes everything that I wanted to include." And he said all that when it came out. And everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it's great, bloody bloody blah." And he's like, ha, "You know how I said that it had everything in that I wanted? Here's a picture of my my Green Lantern that they didn't let me use." Like, have you got that then? If you've put everything in that you wanted to use, you fucking liar. <laughs> so yeah. So, are you going to be getting the third version of the Justice League, or, or, or are you going to give it a miss? <laughs> Smash or pass? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go the very professional route and saying, as amazing as it sounds, I'd rather shit in my hand and clap. Um, I, I didn't like the Snyder Cut. No. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it's better than the original, but you polish your turd. Um, yeah. I, I won't watch it again. I watched it once and that's enough. I didn't even get through it. And I know, yeah. like, I know it's probably... There's probably an, argu- an argument to be made that how can you say you didn't like it if you didn't sit through all of it? No, no, to be fair, I, I watched it in four sittings, so completely understand. Just, yeah, it's just not... It's, I, I just... I don't know. There's something about the whole DC universe thing that I, I don't understand. Yeah. There's not been a good film for a while. I, as we and you have tried to <laughs> suggest a head-to-head, we don't. neither of us even liked it, the Dark Knight <laughs> No, so, it doesn't really work, I it? no, it doesn't. So, like, <laughs> again, man- as we said in the head head section, let us know in the comments if you want us to debate something. That, that's it. Yeah, give us give us something to debate and tell like tell us which of us has to argue what side because otherwise we're not going to think of anything. Yeah. So there's that. But no, I'm not personally. I can I know you'll probably sit and sit through and watch it, which fair play, but it's not. It's not for me. I don't. I don't know. Nah, fair enough. I like the I like the the thing of the characters being fleshed out a bit. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean that it was a good film. It just means that they actually you know built on like Cyborg instead of him just being there and things like that. But it still didn't make it a good film as such. Yeah. So it was just oh yeah, a bit more depth. Fair enough. But it's four and a half hours long. So if there was no depth, then that would be fucking ridiculous. To say. <laughs> but um, since you didn't watch it all, one thing that you would have missed out on, which really made no sense to me. They had uh, Lois Lane chatting to Martha Kent. Martha Kent sort of gave her a bit of a pep talk and all this sort of stuff while Superman was dead and then turned out to be the Martian Manhunter that we saw in the next shot. And the actor who, and the character of the Martian Manhunter was apparently in Man of Steel and was like the general that's a friend of Lois Lane's. So, like, so basically, the pep talk had to come from dead Superman's mum not from the person that she actually knew <laughs> who is the, who is the Martian Manhunter and cha- shapeshifted. And do you know what I mean? It's like proper creep levels for no reason. And yeah. it, it made no no logical sense for that to even happen. And then the very end of the film, he flies down to Bruce Wayne and says, oh, yeah, I've decided that I, I want to get involved with your league or whatever. And you're like, 
where were you like for the other four and a half hours of the film while everyone's having the shit kicked out of them by a big fucking thing from Apocalypse? Do you know what I mean? Like, where is the logic there? Oh, yeah. Martian Manhunter is more powerful than Superman, apart from his, you know, he can't fucking stand fire. But aside from that, he's pretty much more powerful than Supes. And he's got telepathy. Like, fucking throw him in there. If, you, if, you've got, if you're having him in the film, why is he just hiding from everybody the whole way through? The world's literally about to end, and he goes, oh, now that it hasn't ended, I'm going to throw in with those guys. Fucking Zack Snyder. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit... I put this news in here thinking that I wasn't going to rant, and it, I, I sort of had to get some stuff off my chest. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, not for me, but I'm sure there'll be people out there who are excited. More power yeah. to you guys. Enjoy, but I'm going to swiftly pass on that. Yeah, well, now that we've finished our comic book news, let's take a little break, break and go to one of our first, well, our second segment, because we already shown the head-to-head. Um, this segment is uh, because it is Christmas week, and we've been talking about... We talked on the Christmas special that we did for the channel about all the geeky stuff that we were getting that we got and uh, that we got for each other, and we said that we were going to show them off on this. So in the next video, you're going to see my lad opening, like we're showing off some of his stuff. So enjoy. Shiny. I think it's blinding my dad. <laughs> it's his little bit, yeah. The glare is. It's very um, cool, I've though. I've got this dominant Mysterio figure. You haven't said what the belt is? Oh, yeah, the belt. So, the belt is the Rey Mysterio edition, if you the, can see. And it's it the WWE is the Tag Team Championship, tag isn't team it? Tag Team Championship. I'm very lucky to get it, actually. Right, lift it towards you so we can see it. No, no, the other way, so we can see the, the uh, stuff on the back lot because it is a proper genuine belt, isn't it? So, yes, it is. You can see all the WWE hallmarks and stuff. Yeah. So, um, then I'll, now I'm going to show you something else. So, let me just put this over my shoulder. Okay, so, next I got this Dominic Mysterio figure. Great figure. Looks great. Can't wait to play with it. Got Drew McIntyre in the series, Bobby Lashley, <laughs> Damian Priest. You haven't done any of those ones though. <laughs> okay, so there's the next one then, buddy. So the next one, I got Zombie Hunter Spider Man. That's cool. Mm. And in the series, I don't have none of them. That's alright, just show the actual figure. You don't need to show the, the series. Talk about what So it's got Doctor Strange's cape. Yeah. And it's Marvel Legends. Um, does it say what series it is? Yeah, what if? It's a what if series. Okay, next one then, pal. It's got different changeable heads actually as well. Yeah. Okay, and then next. People are just seeing pictures of your, your chest at the moment. So. Oh, yeah. What's this that? This one is the King Sphinx, isn't it? Mighty Morphin King Sphinx. It looks great. <laughs> You're running out of things to say about things, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Just, just, just go through them more quickly and say what you got. They have rogue. That's nice. awesome, isn't it? Number eight hundred. Bang on it. Then I have Mortal Kombat Super Zero. As you can see, pop. Very good. And you got piles of lightning collection figures, didn't you? Then I got this. Um, Mighty Morphin Z putty. Yeah. Then I got this Batman Fortnite uh, graphic novel, I think it is. Yeah. It's got all the codes in there, hasn't it, for yeah. you to get all the, the armour and stuff? I've got a few of them already, hadn't I? Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then I got. Uh, the space black figure. Yep. Oops. It's okay. 
And then you got the limited edition space one as well, didn't you? I've got the silver limited edition space that you can use as weapon. So, so the camera can actually see the figure there, matey. There you go. And then what was the last uh, cool thing you wanted to show off? Now the last cool thing I want to show off. It's uh, already been opened because it's awesome. It's already been opened. Well, I've been wanting this figure for ages. And I got it for Christmas. So, hooray! Ah, bang! Okay, so that was uh, Ruben's Gifts. He had some, some cool stuff that made me a little bit envious, especially his Rogan Sub-Zero Funko Pops, because they were awesome. Um, but, on the plus side, I've added them to the wall behind me. Ha-ha! <laughs> win, win. Um, indeed. So... Do you want to show your stuff off first, or do you want me to show my stuff off first, or how do you want to do it? Uh, I don't mind. I'm, what have I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to show. I also nice. got like, like some t-shirts and stuff, but I can't be asked looking for. No, them. no, don't worry about that. I've, okay. I've got like six cool things to show off. I think. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do three in one. Okay. Um, and then my next one, I'll do two in one. And okay. Then, so pretty much people out. Very good. So my first ones are some wrestling figures. Very good. We have Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong of the Undisputed Era. Nice. I take them out of the boxes because uh not, not know if you can see, but there's lots. Oh that did actually show show up quite nicely. Um yeah. <laughs> Your camera's all over the place now. I know. I, this is Hi guys, we're professionals. Um, so yeah, I got the Undisputed Era there and also a Dominic Dajakovic who now goes by T-Bar or T-Bag or I don't fucking know. T-Bone. I don't, I don't watch T-Bone? I don't know. I don't know. It's not Mace. T-Bone, is it? No, T-Bone's the British guy. Sorry. Is, yeah. is he Miss? No, Mace was um, Dio Madden. I fucking don't know. All I will say though is the... Um, I'll line these up right they got his fucking height right. Yeah, Mattel do a really good job of that, to be fair. I do appreciate how they, they sort of scale the figures yeah. to each other. So, yep, that was quite nice. Goes with my collection. And I'm just not keeping more of them down. That's the web. Uh, you can go now. You can. Oh, all right, fair enough. Well, I'll do a two in one. But since we talked about it, we just saw the video of Reuben and saw his cool Funkos. I'm going to show off my cool Funkos, which uh, are this wonderful Red Hulk Funko Pop, which is awesome. And uh, the really awesome Zombie Gambit from the Marvel Zombies Funko Pops line. Both absolutely awesome and will be jumping on that shelf behind me as soon as I finish recording. So, uh, so yeah, they were, they were two cool ones. So, yeah, you can go uh, for your next one, dude. <laughs> another two in one, clearly because they're from the same thing. Um, if you watch that Christmas episode, you'll see Rory got one of these as well. El Anime, yeah. Bible, and uh, I remember. Hulk. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Mexican Hulk. Mexican yeah. Hulk. <laughs> El Angry Motherfucker. I don't remember what his name is. It was, it, was, it was something along those lines, wasn't it, to be fair? So. Yeah, the boxes are up there, but again, I can't be asked to be that. That's um, okay. <laughs> so they're very cool. Oh, oh, okay. Do you know what it is? It's like we had all these like professional intents with this episode, and then because we were let down by our colleague, it's sort of all gone out the window because we're doing this with like a little bit of a tinge of annoyance. I'll say a little bit, a major tinge of annoyance. So I hope you're fucking watching. <laughs> yeah. You can't laugh. You can't laugh when out today. You can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't laugh when we do this to other people and then get butt hurt when it's you. And get rid of it. And to be fair, said colleague also got rid of our colleagues publicly because of them being the same. Yep. So swings and roundabouts. Uh, Anyway, you, I believe. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because you just showed Funko So we'll go through all the box collectibles And this has got to stay in the box because it's awesome But basically, <laughs> check this bad boy out 1960s That's Batmobile cool. Is, is really cool, isn't it? And I'll, I'll bring it up so you can really see cool. A little Adam West Batman there you got got uh, Burt Ward's Robin sat in the Batmobile ready Because he's not allowed to drink Or go into the nightclub So Adam West is blatantly about to go in And get his Batusi dancing on 
doing a as doing a fact. Doing a doing a doing a that is exactly what's happening there. <laughs> why, why, was, why was you dancing to Misery Business by Paramore? That's what that sounded like. It was like a 60s version of that tune. If you listen to it, it is pretty much the same thing, same beats. <laughs> <laughs> that exact dancing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, and then he flaps us- the cape around a bit and then gets drugged by that girl who then pretends to be Robin and he doesn't notice. <laughs> And you and me, you and me to tell me they share a bed and he didn't wow. realise that, that Robin lost his penis. <laughs> maybe maybe he didn't lose his penis. Maybe he went to bed with a woman and had the penis. Um, fine. I got some um, die cast. Shut the fuck up. I got some die cast metal uh, the way, minifigures, which as you can see, I've stayed in the box. I haven't even open them because these will just get them. there's a five year old in the house guys if I get these out they're never fucking okay, half of yeah, these they're gone. Like vanishing um, which is cool you've got some um, ironically how small these are some of them actually have better face models than like actual wrestling figures nice minus the Miz I don't know if you Some's can up. see that but he... <laughs> it's not great no. the, Miz, the Miz looks like he should be in like an NSYNC tribute band I mean, well, you could say that about them is like in general. To be fair, also, also true. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, quality man, that's awesome. So, um, one cool thing that I've done that I've got, I am going to show off a t-shirt just because it's in a pack and therefore very easy and to hand. But this is a uh, very awesome Spider-Man shirt, so you know, appropriate and stuff. Um, in theory, what I should have done, because this, the fact that this episode is very Spider-Man heavy, I probably should have worn it. <laughs> Eat it, Sal. Put it on. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, the shirt that I'm wearing, which says, uh, don't fuck with the squirrels, um, is also one of my Christmas presents. Uh, it's, yeah. Nice. So, um, your turn. My second to last, I got some Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter cookbook and Harry Potter cocktail book. Nice. Which, like, the cocktail ones is just your normal cocktails, but with some hilariously bad puns so for example the sex on the beach cocktail is known as the dobby's left his socks on the beach nice um, yeah but there, it's not unofficial but it's still wonderful because it's it's still got all the wonderful things and uh although the book is not endorsed by Callie's favorite author jk rowling so there's that um yeah you rory ah cool well i'm gonna go for the last things that i'm gonna showcase here which oh, uh, are pretty cool <laughs> things i have some more so- I, 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 and more stuff yeah. <laughs> well um yeah so <laughs> the last things i'm going to showcase are these graphic novels that i put that I, I got for christmas one being uh, marvel knights daredevil underboss and that is collects issues 26 to 31 of the daredevil series from that started in 1998 and that was the series this was the first even though it's from 26 onwards this is the first volume of daredevil written by brian michael bendis um it's a really good graphic novel however this is the one that i've moaned at you about before where um bendis basically hasn't read the previous stuff that came before it's a really good good jumping on point for daredevil fans and you know i I can't recommend the book enough but if you read like the two volumes before it that were done by um i can't remember the the name of the the author, it will come back to me at some other point, but basically the, the couple of volumes before, it shows that Murdoch and um, Nelson, attorneys at law, are uh, working, are basically owned by Foggy's mum. And Foggy's mum is like this stern businesswoman who's like, you know, properly independent, you know, like a proper independent businesswoman that's like got more authority than they have and won't take any shit from them. I really fairly strong character and everything and uh in this they go the other way and i'm just gonna see if i can quickly find the page there we go can you can you see that big random woman having a, a go on there yes i can yeah that's what what foggy's mum has turned into for saying that she owned a law firm two graphic novels before now she's a caricature yelling oi got and saying about how uh, her son's been caught in some shenanigans and um that it's terrible that the blind man is fine and all this sort of stuff um yeah it's literally just like oh. it's a really good book but that, those two panels you're just like you lazy bastard bendis you didn't read what came before you or you skimmed through the cliff notes and didn't bother 
but yeah, so there's that. And then the other graphic novel I got is one that I've never read before and actually really enjoyed, which is uh, Superman in Action Comics, Volume 3 from the New 52, big hardback version, um, by Grant Morrison. But Grant Morrison does do some good stuff, like with you know, the X-Men and stuff. And he actually does a really good job of, of this Superman book because, for me, one of my problems that I've always had with Superman is that when he's only impervious to kryptonite, then, uh, you know, and it's supposed to be a rare thing. How is it that every villain he faces in any major threat has, has kryptonite? Yeah. yeah, whereas this is literally just, no, no, it's more magical and stuff like that. It's just quite Tell enjoyable. You. Amazon, man. Yeah. But, yeah, so your last one, dude. Uh, second to last, because I found them all. Uh, but speaking of Grant Morrison, I'll go through these quickly, because it was in that one. Is that the one I got you? Yes, these are the ones you got me, which is the Uncanny X-Men Grandma Soul, which falls up from what you got me last Christmas. We also have Batman Year One, uh, Black Widow Deadly Origin, and the Uncanny X-Men, which, as you can see, i have in the middle of reading. Um, nice. Yeah, so uh, I know why you brought this up because of that. Because I was thinking, why, why is he showing the stuff that we put on the Christmas episode? On the Christmas episode, and I've just remembered because I got you an extra special gift without realizing, basically. <laughs> and they're right. Did you? An unintentional special gift with that uncanny X Men bo- um, omnibus. Oh, you know what, man? I completely forgot. Uh, let me just grab it and open it to the exact page my uh, bookmark. How did this happen? <laughs> so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out, uh, which you know, Rory did also want to cry over just a tiny bit, despite what he says. Um, beautiful, uncanny X Men, Alan Davis omnibus, officially signed by Alan Davis. And the the beautiful part about this, because this is just what I looked for straight away to make sure this wasn't just like a print autograph. It's got the I don't know if, if that translates the camera really. Um, it doesn't really, but I've seen it on on the pictures yeah. you sent. So yeah, but the the pen ink has gone through to the other side. Which when I uh, when I told you it was signed, you was like, I was like, did you know it was signed? You're like, I did not. Please send a photo so I can cry. <laughs> hey, you go. Yeah. Um, the, good, the good thing is though, I moaned like fuck about it on the Christmas special where I was where I was saying I've that was disappointed because it was listed as like new condi- as new condition, and then it came and it's like slightly battered and stuff. I mean, I know I made it out to be a lot worse than it was. To, but it was still like yeah, you made it out that it looked like shit when in reality it's just you can tell it's been read a lot, it's got fold lines, but as yeah. it should be the spine. Like that's it. Oh, what a tiny little thing that and slight boxing on the corners, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's but still it's... the thing was like that's not like new. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, oh, but it's got a signature by Ali Alan Dave's not all right, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and then I'll move it to my fast one. Well that uh uncanny signed Alan Davis one is one of my favourites now that I know it's signed. Otherwise, it would have been fucking shit. But no, um, <laughs> it's nice that it's signed, you know, even if it was accidental, I appreciate it. This is my personal favourite because if, if you've watched us for a while, you'll know both me and Rory share favourite game of Skyrim. Yeah. yeah, I got this beautiful notebook, and it is just a notebook. However, it's just phenomenal. It's beautiful. That's that. That's the first page. <laughs> And then every page after that is just... Oh, man, that's awesome. It's just beautiful. The nerd in me loves it. And now that I can fish on Skyrim, I will. I may write down what fish I catch. And the weights and everything on there. <laughs> do, do you know what? Uh, this is... What's the fourth of Winterfell? <laughs> yeah. And like, okay, so this is like completely unrelated. And we may, even, at some point, we may even add a section of just talking about what we've been playing. But yeah. I just started Skyrim again with the anniversary edition. I've just got to Riverwood. Bear in mind how early that is in the game. Yeah. And I think I've done two hours of actual game time just chopping <laughs> wood. Nice. And selling it. So before I've even left Riverwood, I've got like 4,000 coins. Bloody hell. That's the dream. I know. <laughs> well. Comics. Yeah. Since we've shown all this cool stuff, we'll now go to another section, which is collectible hunting, where... Basically, I'm just going to show off some crap that I got off the internet over the last couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it. And we'll, then we'll join you in a few seconds back after that. For Well, we'll just introduce another segment because I'm pretty sure we've run out of subjects to talk about in between these things. <laughs> Hi folks, 
thanks Rory here um, I know normally I do the collectible hunting things as separate videos on the channel and there's loads on there but because this is our new t pilot episode of the Team Venom show I figured I'd do my collectible hunting here so um, normally you see a little bit of where I've been and stuff like that but because of the holiday season I've not been anywhere to buy comics anywhere that I've looked I've not found any so all I found is stuff on eBay which to be fair has been brilliant so the first thing I got was I got a wadge of Wolverine comics which cost me 99 pence and uh, I'm very very happy with it um, so we've got various issues there's only seven of them but they're all great so issue 41 which is a one shot uh, issue 32 which is another one shot where it's um, Wolverine in the concentration camp um, the last part of the Civil War Wolverine tie in uh, issue 49 well, there we go which was a Christmas special um, issue 56 and then issue 73 and 74 and these are by Jason Aaron and they're the ones I'm looking forward to reading the most because I can remember getting the Wolverine comics as they came out and hitting the point of it changing to Dark Wolverine and Jason Aaron doing Wolverine Weapon X series at the same time and then doing the um, Wolverine Goes to Hell where they relaunched it from issue 1 um, which coincides with some of the other stuff I've got but essentially that stuff that I didn't even know existed so I'm looking forward to reading those two issues um, because I thought they were part of the Dakin run so yeah on to other stuff I got off eBay um, I may as well bring this one up because I just mentioned it volume 2 of Jason Aaron's Wolverine reboot run uh, which was Wolverine vs the X-Men volume 1 was Wolverine Goes to Hell and basically Wolverine um, gets sent to hell and demons end up taking over his soul for the end of it and um yeah so it's a really good book hardback graphic the wraparound cover and all that um i also picked up enemy of the state volume two which is awesome because i've had volume one for years um this is something that i hadn't got especially in the same format because the volume one i've got is the same format as this then um volume one of wolverine which is the brotherhood which is the marvel knights wolverine run so issues one to six by greg rooker and um, that was something that I had when it came out. Um, I won this on eBay for 4 99 To get them on eBay normally, is, it's over 30 quid. So, very happy with that. Um, these next two are continuing my my Ultimate X-Men shelf. Um, so, Volume 8 and Volume 12. As I've very nearly got the whole set of those now. I think I'm missing two volumes and then that's it. And then the last thing I've got off eBay, which is probably the most important thing is this the savage land which features x-men and spider-man but more importantly it's from 1987 and it was the very first graphic novel that i ever read so um it's something that i really wanted to get i had it i can remember taking it into school when i was in year three and using it for like art classes and things like that um and it's something that just got lost to me over the years and it's the same printing because the majority of the time you get it and it's got white behind the writing the one that i had i remember being yellow um so fond memories of, of reading this book as a, as a child so i'm very very happy to have found it cheap and i got it for like three pounds something on ebay as well because there's certain places online that you can just find some really good graphic novels out there at the moment unlike charity shops where you go into them and the, those same books would be like 10 15 pound because they'll have gone for the highest price listings which makes no sense uh, case in point there's one local to me that's got 1602 the marvel graphic novel but it's the uk edition with the gray spines the ones that fall apart and are low quality and they want a tenner for that whereas on ebay you can pick up that exact same version for four pound um so yeah it just goes to show that they're not looking at the, at the versions properly because the american version like the proper us marvel trade is about 10 15 pounds so you know there's that but they're obviously not looking properly so anyway that was my haul it was awesome and uh let's go back to the main segment right well since we're showing you know you were showing all your beautiful collectible haul there from the wonders that is the internet because obviously time of year you can't really go out hunting uh because most places are closed yeah exactly so perfect time let's just transition to another segment so you went professional full show uh let's go to the comic of the week by yours truly week 
are just comics that I own or have in the past that I feel like should be a little highlighted. This one is because um, of my love of video games. Nice little tie-in combination, video game comic book. Uh, this is Bloodborne, The Veil Porn Asunder. Dramatic. Uh, purely there uh, because the art style on it is absolutely beautiful. It's a nice introduction to the Bloodborne universe. There's some random points in it, but it's very good. It's not a direct tie into the video game, it's sort of like a spin-off, um, but it includes a lot of the original kind of monsters or the, some of the original locations. If you're into Bloodborne, you'll absolutely love this. It's got some hilariously um, creepy art styles, which I do love. Uh, this cost me one pound, I believe. So, bargain. But yeah, it's very nice. It's one of my favourites, which is why I don't do it too many, but I keep it in this. Um, and yeah, you can find it at probably any local comic store or titancomics.com. That was awesome selection, dude. Um, following on from your comic of the week, let's go for the... <laughs> Look how quick we're firing these through now. Like... <laughs> We've charged shit for a bit now. Now we just... <laughs> You had get like it half rolling. an hour of us just talking nonsense <laughs> there. It's like literally all these segments have just merged into one. So that, that was your comic of the week. Now we're going to go for the uh, a weekly segment that we're, we're going to put out called The Greatest Graphic Novel Guide. Um, here's the, the first part, so enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of the Greatest Graphic Novel Guide. I'm your host Rory Bailey and this week we're going to be talking about Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. As you can see from this I've got all, all three of his trilogy laid out there. Dark Knight Returns, Dark Knight Strikes Again and Dark Knight Master Race. So uh, we'll get around to the other two at some point but for today we're going to talk about the Dark Knight Returns. Firstly the version I've got is from the Eagle Moss Legends of Batman collection. The sole reason this is the one that I'm using is that I've been spending a small fortune on all of these and uh, yeah, so see the, these are the ones that I'm sort of sticking with. Anyway, so The Dark Knight Returns is a really awesome Batman story. One of the very first ones that I read uh, came out around about 1986 I believe, which is also the same year that I, I was born. So uh, yeah, but my uncle got me into Batman and this was one of the books that, that he got me into. Um, essentially the story he follows an elderly Bruce Wayne who's been retired for numerous years and has also grown a moustache because of course and a few bits and pieces on the news start coming out about the Joker and Harvey Dent who reformed and things like that and in fact there we go there's old moustachio Bruce Wayne and so there's like a little bit of a, a little bit of a, an episode because of it and then finds himself randomly nude in the back cave because of course he does and his moustache has disappeared and he has no idea what actual sequence of events probably the worst sequence of events in here that he just loses a moustache but it's still pretty cut down cool some of the visuals in this are awesome as well um, yeah it's just a, a great story and it's basically Batman being old and you know in, in like a dystopian sort of future Gotham and having to deal with various bits and pieces that have been thrown his way because of crime being rampant um, in the city. We also get like a few different versions of his classic costumes. He gets there. Uh, we get a ridiculously good Batmobile there, the, the tank one, which was the influence for the Dark Knight movies. Um, yeah, as you can, you can see that it was, it was awesome. Um, you probably noticed as well. We've had a couple of different costumes so far. We've seen the, the grey and the blue. Now we've got the black and the grey. I'm sure there's one with the big black back symbol as well at some point but yeah he sort of switches between a few of the different ones uh, introduces the first female robin which is carrie kelly however that's um i don't know whether 
it's classed as canon or not, but because it, it's obviously the future. But, um, but yeah, it's a really good story. And one of the first things that I remember reading in here that stood out for, for me as a child is uh, that we get the ridiculously cool thing of, oh, by the way, there, there's some, yeah, the other costume. Um, we get the thing of Superman being sent after, after Bruce. And this was also, I think this was also my introduction to the Green Arrow as a character. But we uh, we got a knockdown slap down, down there, brawl between bats and soups. And I just remember it being so awesome because I obviously as a kid I knew who Superman was and how he's indestructible and everything. And then my uncle showed me this and was like, you get to see Batman just kick the ever loving shit out of Superman in there. And he does. So let me just try and find that for you. Yeah, this is when they're, they're gearing up to it. And as I'm sure you can see, there's lots of stuff that was visually influential on the Batman vs Superman movie as well because of the you know the armor that he's beating Superman up with. And yeah, it's just awesome. It's just a really really good story. And you get a little one-armed Oliver Queen cameo there. Um, and Bruce Wayne just absolutely battering Superman for a while and it's just just a really good story and I'd highly recommend it to anyone who's a fan of Batman or graphic novels and a fan of Frank Miller's work because Frank Miller's awesome and then obviously the future reading for it is Dark Knight Strikes Again which is where everything that happened in Dark Knight gets dialed up to 11 because of the Justice League coming back and then Following on from that is the Dark Knight Master Race, which builds on the lore that's been put together in the previous two books, and it's just a, a generally good, good read. So yeah, so I'd recommend all three of those. And uh, as I say, if you if you've been on the fence about getting into comics, the Dark Knight Returns is the perfect like gateway drug for, for comic book collecting. It's rigging awesome, and I can't say enough good things about it. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick review. And I'll catch you next week with another one. That was a great graphic novel. Indeed, it was. I mean, um, I Dark Knight Strikes Again. Sorry, Dark Knight Returns is one of my all-time favourite graphic novels and such. And as you saw from your Christmas presents, Frank Miller's Batman work is the stuff that I sort of is my go-to for, yeah. for new fans, which is why you, you got Year One. Um, spoiler alert: you might get what that graphic novel just was in the video for next Christmas. <laughs> Or a birthday, who knows? Uh, or a Wednesday, man. Come on, let's not don't get it twisted. Oh, yeah, it could be. It could be a, <laughs> just just for the sake of a Wednesday. Don't um, deprive me of your care packages. <laughs> it's a new year, don't mean they get to just, just, just gotta wait ten months for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. to be fair, I've got do you know what the, the coincidence is? The other thing that I have got to send you is by Frank Miller as well, which is the Frank Miller Chris Claremont Wolverine thing. Which when that comes, we should do a joint greatest graphic novel guy, because I've got the first printing of it, you've got the newest printing of it. We could do like a side by side thing. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so that that should be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, that was a great <laughs> graphic novel guide. We're already like getting we still it. Still managed to check it. Yeah, we yeah. Just... But um, so with mind about our colleague that hasn't like joined us after we delayed this recording of this several times because of it. So now you're going to see that colleague on the five minute video that they sent us to unbox a toy that they bought. So uh, yeah, this is the collectible corner. So we're gonna go straight to that and uh, enjoy. Hey everyone, it's Callie here with a quick figure unboxing. I picked up Lady Deathstrike today in HMV for, as you can see, $16.99, which for a decent Marvel Legend like this, that's quite a bargain. But uh, yeah, I saw it, I was like, well that will go perfectly with my Wolverine. So here's a quick look at the box. There's the bio, if you want to pause and read it. The rest of the figures in the wave. The builder figure for this wave is Zemnu. I don't know that character, but I got his torso. So let's uh, open her up and uh, see what it's all about, shall we? 
if I could get my scissors open. Okay, that box was giving me some issues. So, got her out of the main box, just here in the plastic tray. Doesn't look like there's any cable ties or anything. Oh, the build figure piece is actually in its own separate tray, so that's good, because I don't need that. Well, let's pop the figure out and take a look. Come on. She doesn't want to come out. There we go, there's one arm free. <laughs> this is fun. There we go. And there's the figure out of the packaging. And I have to say, first impressions, I'm very impressed. Get my light on. There you go. There's the figure in a close up detail. There you go, and there's the back. All right, I shall take a closer look over on my channel at this figure. Um, if you want to check that out, feel free. See you next time. Bye. So that was uh, our wonderful collectible corners. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, unboxing there. Obviously, um, for the benefit of future episodes, you're going to see different things come out in those corners. Um, you might see myself, you might see the Seaman over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> <C> -man. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, so so we're now going to bring you to our last segment and then we'll be back and we'll wrap up this episode for you. But um, essentially, one of the segments that we want to do is one called the where we, we basically spotlight some indie comics. And this first one, we're using a bit of archive footage from when we went to Comic Con in November. And this is Jordan Wyatt from Reckless Hero Comics talking about some some of their current projects and upcoming ones. Um, so yeah, let's roll that clip and uh, see you in a few minutes. Spider Man, Spider Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Look out! Here comes the Spider Man. I'm Jamin, I'm here with the uh, Reckless Hero, so uh, today we've got all of our comics uh, and our graphic novel, Knights vs Pirates, a brand new one out on sale today. So we've got ongoing stories, we've got this as a, as a graphic novel, we've got our artworks on display, as well as our prints by the amazing Chris Timber and the rest of the team. Uh, we have got other stuff in the works, but you know, things, things do take a little bit of time, so uh, keep your eyes peeled on our, on our social media, so we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Uh, give us a shout, say hello, tell us what your favourite story is, tell us what you had for breakfast, you know, we're, we're open to everything. Uh, but yeah, uh, please get in touch and uh, keep your eyes out because there's some really interesting stuff coming up. Um, I, I don't want to say anymore because it might be, it might be secret, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. So. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. you're an MDA. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. I don't want to, uh, you, don't, you don't want to see me get hurt by those who know. No, no, no. So, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's the last segment, and perfect way to end is the Indie Comics Spotlight on account of the fact that both you and I have done Indie Comics ourselves, yeah. which if I'd have thought about it, I'd have them to hand, but I have not. <laughs> I think you've got them to hand, haven't you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the main reason I mentioned this is that I know that on the um, Christmas special, when we were talking about things that were coming up, oh, there we go, Donna, what have you got in your hand there, buddy? I have the beautiful collector's edition of the suit, um, which features the first four issues, I believe, um, signed yep. here. Um, not to mention, I have a lovely handwritten note. And of course, my face is involved, which is the reason I'm happy to promote it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've also got here, oh, is it these ones? Yeah. Okay. Let me get the, I have duplicates. Let me get these out of the pile. Um, I also have here, Issue one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of uh, your wonderful series there, my friend, The Suit. And I'm glad that you ended up, you showed that issue seven, because I probably should have had it there, because that is the first comic from Team Venom Comics to go on sale in 2022, which is the first part of the crossover that the pair of us are doing called Last Rights. On the back of it there, Connor, if you just 
TikTok, so then it flicks to you. There we go. This is the back of it, which shows the Team Venom Comics projects, including which loads. <laughs> that one there, which is my little gem, which I actually put the effort into finishing. Well, uh, the main reason I bring that up is that part issue seven of the suit is part one of Last Rites, which is the crossover between your series, Sins of Limbo, and uh, the suit, which the pair of us came up with back in, was it April, when we like basically planned out the whole thing and then just yeah. sort of we're like right okay well we got plenty of time to get to january to do it at. you were like <laughs> we were saying all that and now we've like it's got to january the first issue's there i had it done and delivered by like september or something like that and then uh, so so yeah so that's going to be available on the team venom comics ebay store shortly um i know that you've been working on your sins of limbo which issue one is also going to be available online shortly i believe um yes i think you're going for like a Feb, end of February sort of release? It's going to be between February and like start of April. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, are, are you changing it then or are you keeping the one that you've already got for issue one? The one I've got is going to be issue one. Um, cool. It's just a case of what I'm going to do is have, I think, because I think I'm doing a three three issue run, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So is, the, is the third issue going to be the tie into last rights yeah. or are you doing the last rights tie in as a fourth issue? The, the third one's going to tie into last rights, oh. um, and then that one because I want I want to get them all finished, and then I can get them published one by one. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, so everyone, obviously, stay tuned to our socials for that, um, and you can still pick up one of the few copies left of the suit because we've got roughly four or five copies left for sale. That's about it. Of that, I mean, we've got. A handful of the American version where it's the um, American size comics and stuff, board and bagged and stuff. That's we've got a handful of those left. Got uh, no issues one, two, and three left. I've got a few issues four left because the, produ- the publisher sent me too many, which was great. <laughs> um, that was you remember they, they did that mistake of removing two pages from the center of it and then they ended up sending me the whole order again. Yeah, and I because I was like, Look, look, guys, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to replace every one of these that, that I've sent out with the error. And I just didn't tell anybody. So loads of people have got it missing two pages. <laughs> Professionals. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, so I've, I've still got a few issue fours. I've got a few issues five and six left because I, the publishers basically are now doing me more in bulk, which is great um, because of the sheer volume of orders that were placed last year. Um, so there's those. Um, so you can get five and six now, which is a two-parter. You can get the, the two... So one to four as a as a trade, you can get the issue one of the American styles. There's also on the Team Venom Comics eBay a, uh, account. There's also listings for all of it in one big package, giggity, in order to make uh, everything easier and more convenient to order. And yeah. then um, issue seven, as I say, is going to be going live within the next week. And uh, because we did say January 2022. That box of issue sevens has been sat on a shelf for about four, four months, just and I've been like, must resist urge <laughs> to, to list and sell. So, uh, so they're actually finally going to be out for sale, which is cool. Um, I th- think that's it for our projects, isn't it? And then for a comic book related ones, anyway. But then other projects, obviously, you've got your own wonderful comic, Connor's Games and Geekery channel, which uh, I'm sure everyone's noticed across the bottom of the screen is your Zoom ID, which it is, is awesome. Uh, it's, it's a channel I've had for a while, but I kind of abandoned it for uh, like a year and a half. But uh, I do still have the original videos on there, which is my partner playing a horror game where she cries um, nice. genuinely, which is hilarious. Uh, and you screaming and, at one? Yeah, and then part one and two of me playing a horror game called Palmyra Orphanage, which I'm yet to finish because I, I'm not good with horror games. I love them, but they don't love me. And that's I know what problem. you mean, I'm okay? saying. Yeah, I and I the thing is, if you any of you watch that and you see like me turning a corner and I'm like this, it's not because there's a camera on me. If I was playing that on my own, it'd be the same thing. Yeah. Um. So at some point, I think I might do it. I might do that as like a uh, 500 subscribers and I'll finish the game sort of thing. Yeah. Um. Because yeah. I don't want to put myself through that for no reason. And then, yeah, I've got a figure review on there, which was my like comeback video because I bought a. Uh, Captain America game of us thing. Um, there'll be more figure reviews because that's why I changed it to Games of Geekery because it's just anything I love that I can talk about. There's also a format. Basically, what this episode is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
there's a Fortnite video coming out with uh, you and your youngling. Yep. That'll be up on Monday the 3rd. Nice. And then, yeah, just anything I want to upload or play will be going on there, man. Okie dokie. Well, there'll be links, obviously, in the description. So uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, if you've not enjoyed what you've seen as well, tell us in the comment comment section. Remember to give us a subject for head-to-head. Um, if we get loads of different subjects, we'll probably do them all as one part of the whole head-to-head segment. So, yeah, just go through it. Throw them at us. Give us your best shots. Some of them, to be fair, you know, we could get one subject that we're just not feeling and it ends up being a one-minute thing, you see. So we'll probably stack subjects. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, yeah, and also, if um, if you enjoyed seeing the collectible corner with our colleague, you can find her YouTube channel, which is Callie's Collectible Review, but with an I instead of the A on collectible for some reason. Um, otherwise, if you do it the normal way, you won't find it. So is if you find that, that there's true? loads. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Is that's, that, true? That, that wasn't meant as a joke. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you go and find that on there, there's hundreds of action figure reviews. They're all really good. Um, true. And then. There's stuff about, um, because obviously, if you've seen any of your videos, or indeed that collectible corner, um, it's not that obvious, but basically, Callie is transgender, and um, therefore, on her channel, she's done loads of things about that. And uh, so, yeah, it's worth, worth taking a look and, and checking that out. And for the record, so, guys, uh, the following episodes will be more polished. Yes, yeah, we were just sort of like, we just ha- we had this scheduled um, to record. We, we today. pushed it back and pushed it back, and yeah, we wanted to do it as a weekly thing, and we could have done yeah. two by now. <laughs> yeah, so it's just Isn't a case it? of right. We'll do this now. We'll ramble. We've not really got a proper show plan. Next next week we we can just crack on, and it'll be more of a polish, and it'll feel more like a show. But yeah, because initially I, it would have been right. There's the three of us on here mainly the fallout from Christmas and geekery stuff to show off these little segments we've done because the segments are are all fine and they're. Uh, and there so yeah thanks for watching everybody please like subscribe that sort of stuff comment comment if you liked it comment if you didn't um unless you're dave don't comment at all because transphobic stuff will not fly this time around so yeah thank you very much catch you all next time yeah